not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house, there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you to go and I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I'm going. I will not leave you orphan. I am coming to you. In a little while, the world will no longer see me, but you will see me. I have said these things to you while I am still with you. But the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I have said to you. I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your heart be troubled. The program says that this is a homegoing celebration. And I'm totally aware of how ironic that statement is. Because I generally don't feel like celebrating at funerals. They hurt. It's difficult. It's a season in life that we all would rather not go through. But we must. So God gave us this house. But not just this building, the people who are inside of it. These folk. This is God's body. The body of Christ. And we come together in times of grief and of pain and of struggle so that we can help each other get through it. So that's why we are gathered here to start the healing. Because one thing I know for sure, if that Jesus Christ were to walk through those doors right now, the first thing that he would do would be to start healing folk. That's what the Bible says. That's what I know we can expect. Jesus lives. 
And Jesus dwells with us here in the body of Christ. So we can expect the healing. So as we move forward, let's move forward in the spirit of healing. With us today is the men's chorus of Salem United Methodist Church. They've come to bring a musical selection to get us started. Um, just a couple of housekeeping notes. Uh, you may want to put your phones on vibrate. As you can see, the church is under some construction, so there's a restroom underneath the doors to my left. I have the big love sign on it. We're going to follow the program as you all see it. And we're going to try to do it as safely and expeditiously as we can because we all know what's going on out there. But now it's the time to focus on healing. So as we allow the Holy Spirit into this sacred space, I'm asking you to open your hearts and allow that balm in Gilead to do its work. Amen and amen. Thank you. 
Good morning. Our Old Testament scripture is found in the book of Isaiah, chapter 65, beginning with verse 17. Isaiah 65, beginning at verse 17. I beg of you to hear the words of the Lord. For I am about to create new heavens and a new earth. The former thing shall not be remembered or come to mind. But be glad and rejoice forever in what I am creating. For I am about to create Jerusalem as a joy and its people as a delight. I will rejoice in Jerusalem and delight in my people. No more shall the sound of weeping be heard in it, or the cry of distress. No more shall there be in it an infant that lives but a few days, or an old person who does not live out a lifetime. For one who dies at a hundred years will be considered a youth. One who falls short of a hundred will be considered accursed. They shall build houses and inhabit them. They shall plant vineyards and eat their fruit. They shall not build and another inhabit. They shall not plant and another eat. For like the days of a tree shall the days of my people be, and my chosen shall long enjoy the work of their hands. They shall not labor in vain or bear children for calamity, for they shall be the offspring be blessed by the Lord and their descendants as well. Before they call, I will answer. While they are yet speaking, I will hear. The wolf and the lamb shall feed together. The lion shall eat straw like the ox. But the serpent, its food shall be dust. They shall not hurt or destroy on all my holy mountain, says the Lord. Our New Testament scripture is found in Ephesians chapter 6, beginning at verse 10. Isaiah, excuse me, Ephesians 6 beginning with verse 10. Finally, be strong in the Lord and the strength of his power. Put on the whole armor of God so that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For our struggle is not against enemies of blood and flesh, but against rulers and against authorities and against the cosmic spot powers of the present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God so that you may be able to stand on that evil day and having done everything to stand firm. 
Stand therefore and fasten the belt of truth around your waist and put the blessed breastplate of righteousness as shoes for your feet put on whatever will make you ready to proclaim the gospel of peace with all of these take the shield of faith with you will be able to quench all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Pray in the Spirit at all times in every prayer and supplication that the end keep alert and always preserve supplication for all the saints. Pray also for me, so that when I speak, a message may be given to me and make known with boldness the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in chains. Pray that I may declare it boldly as I must speak. May God add a blessing to the reading and to the hearing of this, his word. Now won't you join me for the affirmation of faith. The affirmation of faith is number 881 in the hymnal. Would you stand please? And it says, I believe in God the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you, men, for waking me up. Because now I'm supposed to come with a prayer of comfort. So if you would, would you bow your heads with me for a moment of prayer? Gracious Father, most merciful God in heaven, God, you are God all by yourself. God, you are great. You are mighty. You are good. You are everlasting, Lord. You are our creator, our redeemer, and our sustainer. And Lord, 
If we had 10,000 tongues in Salem United Methodist Church this morning, we wouldn't have enough to praise you for how good you've already been to us today. Because, Lord, it is a good day. A day that only you could have made. And Heavenly Father, even in the midst of our tears, we recognize and salute your sovereignty. The fact that you are our king, that you are our ruler, and that you have ordained this moment and every moment in our lives to come to pass. So Lord, right now we ask in the name of Jesus, that you will make everyone within the sound of my voice a good steward of this opportunity that you have before us right now. This is an opportunity for a family to come together and to say goodbye. This is an opportunity for a community to come together and say farewell. This is an opportunity for a church family, for a group of Christian disciples to come together and recognize a life well lived. So Lord, when you add all those things up, all we can do is say thank you, Jesus. Lord, thank you for waking us up and getting us clothed in a reasonable portion of our good mind and sound strength Lord thank you for allowing us to grieve with our family and to provide the comfort that we can thank you gracious father for your son Jesus Christ because Lord we don't grieve as those who do not believe oh Lord we may grieve but we grieve only a selfish grief that that says that we'll miss brother Henson right now but Lord we know that you have a place for us all. Brother Henson didn't wait around here until February the 6th. Oh no, Lord, absent from the body means to be present with you. And I know he's enjoying his crown right now. I know that he's enjoying that mansion right now that Jesus said would be made for him. And that was prepared for him by the Son of God himself. I know that he's with his wife and with his brothers and sisters and his parents and with all the host of, of heaven who are already there waiting for us. And Lord, deep down inside, I know that everything is already all right. So, Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this task. We thank you for this man of God that we celebrate today. We thank you for this host of witnesses and for this family. We thank you for the charge to bring the Holy Spirit into this place. And, Lord, right now, in Jesus' name, we ask for the Holy Spirit to descend upon this family. Lord, light their path as they come in and as they go out. Lord, be there to comfort them, not only today, but for the days that are to come. And Lord, when it's all said and done, let us all be able to stand along with artist Ray Henson and all of the ancestors of Salem United Methodist Church to celebrate your holy name and to praise you in the highest of heavenly courts. Lord, thank you, we pray, in Jesus' name. Amen and amen.
Something about the name Jesus. Something about the name Jesus. It is the sweetest name I know. Oh, how I love the name Jesus. Oh, how I love the name Some people say I'm crazy, but I can't explain the power that I feel, y'all, when I call his name. I said it just like fire, shut up in my bones, the Holy Ghost is moving, y'all. And it just won't leave me alone. There is something, y'all. Something about the name Jesus. Something about the name Jesus. It is the sweetest name I know. Whoa, oh, how I love the name Jesus. Oh, how I love the name Jesus. It is the sweetest name I know. It is sweeter than honey. Uh -huh. yeah. oh, honey. Oh, I can feel the Holy Ghost move. Yeah. About the name Jesus. Something about the name Jesus. The precious name Jesus. It is the sweetest name. I know. I know. Oh, how I love the Oh, how I love the name Jesus. Oh, how we love the name about the name Jesus.
something about that name Jesus you can call on the name of Jesus the name of Jesus works well, good morning everyone it is, my name again is Devalius Bright and I'm the pastor of this great and historic congregation called Salem United Methodist Church Brother Artis Henson is a native son of this congregation and this church family. And the duty of officiating these proceedings falls to me. Of course, you and our late brother have me at a disadvantage. Because I had not had the pleasure of making Brother Henson's acquaintance as of yet as well as many of you therefore I, I'm mindful of the need that we have right now to be safe during the time of COVID-19 so I won't keep you here a long time yelling and screaming at you in fact, I want to get straight on to the scripture, if that's okay with you. The scripture I selected for this morning comes from the Gospel of Luke. In the 11th chapter, at the very first verse. Luke, 11th chapter, starting at verse 1, proceeding to verse 4. As I'm reading from the gospel, it's our tradition to stand if you are able, but I also recognize the family. Luke 11 and 1 begins, he was praying in a certain place. And when he ceased, one of the disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray. Is John taught his disciples? And he said to them, When you pray, say, Father, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread and Forgive us our sins. For we ourselves forgive everyone who is indebted to us. And lead us not into temptation. This is the word of God for the people of God. And the response is thanks be to God. You may be seated. sermon topic for today is please pray please please pray now let us pray gracious father most merciful God in heaven Lord we love you we lift you up and we magnify your holy name but right now heavenly father we need to hear a word from you so please father please Remove this humble messenger and leave standing here in his place, Lord, your good, your true, and your perfect word for your people. So that when we leave this time of the eulogy, Lord, we will leave with the blessed assurance that your glory and your glory alone has been shown for. And that indeed your goodness, your grace, and your mercy will continue to be manifested in our lives. This and all other blessings we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Stina and family and friends who are gathered here. The men's ensemble. I 
our own minister of music, Brother Marcus Quillian. I also want to recognize any other ministers of the gospel who are here. If you're here, would you stand where you are right now? Thank you so much for coming and supporting us. Thank you. God bless you. The sermon title is Please Pray. And I want you to turn to your neighbor and say nothing, all right? Keep your face mask on. And just remember the title. Please pray. I would ask all of you to please pray because I know that prayer works. I know that prayer changes things. I know that prayer is good for you. I even found a scientific study out there on the internet. One of the government health sites actually has a study that says how good prayer is for you. Now, it's a scientific study for sure. It was done by some psychopharmacologist. I said it all right. I'm proud of myself. Psychopharmacologist from India. They did this research and they they study prayer the effect of prayer on on patients not only the patients who pray for but people who pray for other people they wanted to see if there was actually some observable difference and they did find that the some of the results were consistent with the placebo effect or other types of Phenomena and statistics. But it contained one particular statement, and I want to read it for you. And this is on their website. It says, Prayer may result in benefits that are due to divine intervention. It's the United States federal government put this on their website. Although the very consideration of such a possibility may appear scientifically bizarre, it cannot be denied that across the planet, people pray for health and for relief of symptoms in times of sickness. Healing through prayer, healing through religious rituals, healing at places of pilgrimage, and healing through related forms of intervention are well-established traditions in many religions. Now, I didn't know Brother Henson personally. Just like I don't know many of you, but I know that you're in pain. I know that you're grieving right now, and, and I know that that hurts right now. Please pray. I, I, I can't do much more for you but than to ask you to please avail yourself of the one power in the universe that I know will help you right now. And that is the power of prayer. As pastor of Salem, I'm already praying for you. I was praying for you from, from the get-go. I was up at 3 o'clock this morning praying for you. But you know, prayer is prayer is a mechanism, it's a process, it's a thing that won't change the circumstances around you, but it will change you. Life is hard. Life is full of moments just like this. Dreadful moments. But God is still good. God's goodness is accessed through prayer. In today's selected text, 
text, Jesus is with his disciples and Jesus is teaching them how to pray just like John taught his disciples to pray. Because you see, prayer isn't natural. Prayer is supernatural. So somebody has to teach you how to pray. You're just not, you're just not born praying. Now I know people who pray like they've been born praying. But you don't have to pray with a whole lot of big fancy words. You don't have to, to pray like preachers pray. The only prayer that you really need to pray is, help me, Jesus. Help me, Jesus. And God already knows what you need. Well, the disciples come and they ask Jesus, and Jesus teaches them something that we now call the Lord's Prayer, and you all know it. The version that I read in the Bible may not be as familiar to you as the one that we recite all the time, but this is the scriptural basis for the Lord's Prayer. And if I were to point you to an instruction manual to help you to learn how to pray, I would point you to Luke, the 11th chapter, the first through the fourth verse. So we're going to go through it real quick right now to help you to pray. Because I know that it'll help. Jesus starts. Father. You may start your prayer, our Father. But the point is simple. Jesus is saying that prayer is a family affair. Prayer is something that children pray to their father and their father answers back to their children. We pray to our father because every father here knows that, that the only thing that a father ever wants to do is to protect and provide for their children. Brother Henson knew it, the, the men's chorus knows that I know it, fathers got to provide for their children. I don't care what it is that my two daughters ask me for. I'm going to try to give it to them. <laughs> but I'm just a Methodist preacher on a Methodist preacher's salary. And these guys can tell you that ain't a whole lot. My father in heaven has infinite resources. And just by moving his lips, he can create anything under the sun. Your father will answer you if you pray. So please pray. First pray for God's name to be holy. Pray to your father that his name continues to mean something to you in your life. That's what something holy is. It doesn't really even matter what it is. We assign all kinds of holiness to all types of things. Look around the church. It's holy stuff. You can't, can't swing a stick without hitting some holy in this place. Is God's name holy to you? It is when you pray. It may not be out there on the cut, but it is when you pray. He says, Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. We, we ask God for us to let go. Before I ask God for anything, I have to ask God to empty my hands first so I can receive what God has for me to receive. I can't have what God wants me to have if I'm holding on to what I want. Because I want all kinds of messed up stuff. It ain't good for me. Even when I think it's good, it ain't good. Jesus says, ask God for God's kingdom to come. God's kingdom to be. And to understand that when you let go, you're letting God. 
Because God is in everything. God is everywhere. Anytime that you grab empty air, you're not grabbing emptiness. You're grabbing something that God made. He made with his own voice. With his word, his son. And his spirit dwells with us right now. So ask God on the regular for God's will to be done. And then finally, give him your list. Give us this day our daily bread. God wants to know what you need. No, I said that wrong. God already knows what you need. God wants to know if you got sense enough to ask for what you need. And God will give it to you even if it's not good for you. <laughs> I've asked for so much messed up stuff that I had to ask God to take back. God is good and if God gives it to you it will be for the good because all things work together for the good when you love God and you're called according to God's purpose finally God is a forgiving God I would ask you to please, please pray because I don't know your family, but I know mine. And I know at times like this, often there are things that have not been said that should have been said. More often there's things that were said that we wish weren't said. And what do you do with that? when it's too late to talk to the person yourself. Please pray. There's a long standing tradition within the body of Christ of us venerating, praying to those who have gone on before us. We as African Americans recognize our ancestors and the strength that comes from knowing that our ancestors are there with us right now in these trying times and these troubled times and they want to help us. And the way that you communicate is not on AT&T or Verizon or Sprint. It's to pray. Pray doesn't come, prayers don't come with a monthly bill. You don't have a data limit. You don't have to turn the ringer off when you come into church. You can pray in the morning. You can pray in the noontime. You can pray at work. You can pray at school. You can pray when you're in trouble. And guess what? Prayer is fun. Prayer feels good. You can pray just for the pleasure of praying. Do you ever call your best friend when you feel good just to talk it, just to chop it up? God wants to hear from you when it's good, when things are going good. God wants to hear your praise report. God wants to hear, thank you, Jesus. I could go on and on, but you get the point. You're all intelligent, mature adults. I don't have to be the dead horse. The point that I'm trying to make is very short and very sweet. It's very simple and it's very clear. It's the best advice that I can give to you or any person of faith. Please, please pray. And that it's the message for today. Amen? amen. And amen.